In this video, we will talk about beta or standardized coefficients in multiple linear regression. Now, sometimes when you're dealing with economic data, you might encounter variables that are measured on a scale that is very difficult to interpret. So for example, if uh, we were looking at the um, effects of test scores on, on wages or salaries, uh, you might encounter uh, different denominators for test scores, right? So the test score could be um, measured on, on uh, uh, a scale of 40 or on a scale of 140 or 1400. And it would be very difficult for us to assess what would be the effect on salaries or wages if test scores were 10 points higher or 20 points higher. So in those cases, it might be more it might make more sense to try to predict what happens if the test score was just one standard deviation higher. Okay, so we're talking about, let's say, test scores, and we are asking if the test score was one standard deviation higher, what would be the effect on wages, for example? Okay, or by how many standard deviations would wages go up? So this is the connection we're trying to make here, okay? And everything, as you can um, already notice here, would be measured in standard deviations. So again, a beta coefficient is going to be used when some of the um, independent variables or the dependent variable have units that are not easily understood, okay? So um, the question that we're asking here is, it's really related to how important um, one variable, let's say test scores is relative to another, another variable, let's say IQ for wages, okay? So we're trying to assess the importance of an effect relative to what is going on in the population. So the question that beta coefficients ask or allow us to ask is the following. How many standard deviations will Y change when XJ increases by one standard deviation. And these coefficients are known as beta coefficients, okay? Now, the nice thing is that any statistical software will compute these for you. Um, and typically, uh, the standardization is happens uh, pretty similar to how you know, you interpret z-scores. So when you're thinking about z-scores, you're basically taking any variable y, subtracting of, so y is any variable here, it could be x as well, but you're basically subtracting of the mean of y and then dividing it by the standard deviation of y, right? So this is how you standardize any variable. Okay, so you subtract off the mean and divide by the sample standard deviation and then use that variable in a regression, okay? Now, um, beta coefficients, the formula for beta coefficients would be represented by the letter B, which is really counterintuitive, but uh, these are called beta coefficients or standardized coefficients because we can't use beta. Beta is something that we already use for our um, coefficient. So just remember that when we talk about beta coefficients, we are talking about the B's um, and I'll show you what the formula is in, in a second. But before we get into the formula, one of the things I want you to know is that a larger beta coefficient for a variable means that the, that variable has a more important effect on the distribution of y or on the variation of y. So let's take an example here. Let's say that an increase, so uh, let's say we were trying to uh, predict final exam scores by using data on prior GPA and ACT scores, okay? And let's say that we find that the beta coefficients, right, representing, uh, represented by B1 in this case, or B2, uh, for prior GPA, uh, the effect of prior GPA, beta uh, B1 is 
and for beta B2 is 0.297, okay? So from this, we would be able to say that if these are significant, of course, we would be able to uh, infer that ACT scores cause a larger movement in the distribution of final exam scores, okay? Because this is greater than, B2 is greater than B1. Now we can do calculations by hand, right? So even when R uh, or Stata would do these, calculate these beta coefficients for us, we can always do the calculations by hand. So in order to get what this beta coefficient is, let's say the beta coefficient for xj is represented by b hat j, okay? So in order to get b hat j, we need to know the slope coefficient beta hat j. So if you had a regular regression where you were running you were running uh, the regression of y on x, um, you have your regular predictors. or regular coefficients, beta one hat or beta two hat. So we're essentially just saying that if we wanted to get B1 hat, for instance, we would take beta one hat and then multiply that by the standard deviation of X1, right? This is what that J stands for, right? So standard deviation of x1 divided by the standard deviation of y, okay? So if we take that back to our example, what we're saying is that if the standard deviation of prior GPA was 0.545, the standard deviation of our y was, final score was 4.7, then we can calculate the coefficient in this way. So we can calculate the beta coefficient in this way where 1.9 is your, so this, this is supposed to be 1.915, okay. So this is gonna give you this value of 0.222. So what do we know now? We, we understand that the interpretation of the beta coefficients is such that if x1, uh, in this case, prior GPA increases by one standard deviation, then y, which is our final exam score, changes by b1 hat, which is 0.222, okay? So essentially what we're doing is we're measuring the effects not in terms of the original units of y, or the xj, but in standard deviation units, okay? So remember that this, all of this is in standard deviation units. So what, what it does is it makes the scale, it makes the scale of x and y irrelevant. Okay, this is why we wanted to get to beta coefficients because the scale doesn't make sense. So we want to make sure that the scale becomes irrelevant. And this equation uh, puts the explanatory variables on equal footing. So you can actually see um, the effects of uh, x1 and x2 or changes uh, in the standard deviation of x1 and x2 on, on y. And... Uh, this would tell you, based on comparing, let's say, two coefficients, beta coefficients, you can assess which has a stronger effect on the distribution of y, or in other words, which explanatory variable uh, is the most important.